Well, greetings everyone. Many are called, but few are the 144,000. That's what I'd like to cover here today. It kind of uh, intertwines the, uh, the Hate Paul Society, the Just Believe in the Jesus, and Once Saved, Always Saved, all clustered together in what I'm going to bring out here, as well as the rest of the world. It hasn't been called at this time. I'm not saying that all those were called that I just mentioned, but the Hate Paul Society, I believe that they were called. Uh, they still can repent, I'm hoping. Uh, we'll show you here in some of the parables where I believe it is so. And the reason being is they had to understand the law enough to be able to hate Paul for breaking it or being a hypocrite about it, stating that uh, Paul preached the law, but he didn't keep it himself. And, you know, all these different things where those of the just believe and the once saved, always saved society are those that are just on the first rung of the ladder. They understand that there is a higher power at least even though they don't believe what our King had spoke or what our Heavenly Creator's will is, you know, and what His will is, is to keep the commandments and the laws. And I want to tie that up in part of what I brought out the last video uh, from what Ezekiel spoke on. And that's where I get the keep the Ten Commandments by keeping the schoolmaster and obeying the schoolmaster, the laws which eventually bring you to our king, to where you obey our king only. But it, it steps. It's different rungs on the ladder to the kingdom. I guess we could start here at Revelation 17, 14. It says, uh, and it, it talks about in verse 13, uh, these are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. Talking about those up here that, our king is speaking about, you know, the ten horns and such, and they give their power to the beast. But then it talks about, these will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is the ruler of rulers and king of kings. And those who are with him are called, they're chosen, and they're faithful. But it's two categories. They are called. Now, all of us have been called, and out of all that's been called, there are some that are chosen. They're with this called group as well, and they are faithful. And we discussed this in the last video about being faithful and not being faithful. You want to be faithful by living by the every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father, as Matthew 4.4 4 says. Last video I said Matthew 3.3, 3, and, you know, I was uh, still a little bit dizzy after getting my tooth yanked and all that, but I had to bring forth the video, and I said Matthew 3.3 3 instead of 4.4. 4. Just a slip of the tongue. I hope you can forgive me for that. I wasn't trying to mislead anybody, but if you know your scriptures, you knew what I was talking about to begin with. Now here in 1st Kepha, uh, they call him Peter, the god of penises, and that's not his name. His name was Simon or Kepha. He was the rock. So here in 1 Kepha 2, 1, and we're going to go through this. First, he's speaking of the chosen out of all those that have and will be called. And he's speaking to the chosen, saying, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking, as newborn babes. Now, the reason you can say he's speaking to the chosen ones is because they've been reborn. And as we had discussed in the last video, 1st Jock and Honor John, chapter 3, it spoke about those that are of Yahweh. They're born into Yahweh, cannot sin. They do not sin. So these ones that are newborn babes have stopped sinning. They quit doing these things. And as newborn babes, they desire, we desire the pure milk of the word. We don't want the doctrines of demons, 
mixed up in these things and we put our trust in our king only to teach us and to lead us and guide us direct us and protect us that they may grow thereby by what this pure milk of the word if indeed you have tasted that the messiah is pardonable he is forgiving he acquits us of our sins and that's how we became these newborn babes. We're no longer those that commit sin. Uh, we're not committing unrighteousness. We're not committing iniquity or lawlessness. We have practiced to the point, because uh, one of the scriptures will show, you know, the parable of the vineyard, where someone out first part of the day they were called out, and then others called out various hours afterwards, but they all received the same reward, of salvation. Now it says here in uh, 1 Kepha 2 4, it says, Coming to him as to a living stone. Our king is the living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by Yahweh and precious. Our king is precious, and he was chosen by Father Yahweh, as others will be chosen as well to be priests under the high priest, which Yahshua became. It says, you also as living stones, and it talked about if our mouths were shut up, you know, the, the stones would be raised and they would speak out the truth. You also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Zion, a chief cornerstone, Yahshua, our king. Some call him Yeshua. You know, Jesus is not going to be allowed. Uh, believe you me, it will not be tolerated. But this chief cornerstone is our true king. He is elect. He was chosen. He's precious. And he who believes on him, like the scripture had said I, in uh, Yachanan, you know, that all you have to do is believe on the Jesus. No, you have to believe on our king by obeying his every living word that he spoke and became. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Now you have to admit, if you're one of those of the uh, hate Paul society or of those that just believe in the Jesus and once saved always saved you were put to shame by the last video I brought out because I let you see what our king's true word was I helped you to learn how to read the scriptures and not just read them therefore to you who believe he is precious yes to me he's precious to those that are truly called and have walked enough in the faith that the schoolmaster turns them over to our king. So that by our king's faith, knowing that we are not doing things that are unlawful, we have hope and faith in our king that he will give us the salvation, and he puts that faith onto us because we've been obedient to his every word. Therefore, to you who believe he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected, our king here, the stone which the builders rejected, has become the chief cornerstone. He's the only way you can get to the Father. A stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And that's because so many people want to make our king live up to their expectations of once saved, always saved. Uh, they don't want to hear our king say anything like, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Instead, they want to believe that once saved, always saved. And all we had to do was believe in the Jesus. We didn't have to forget our sins. We didn't have to overcome our sins and never sin again to be like our king. We just want to believe in you, Yahshua, have got to submit yourself to what we believe. We must inherit the kingdom. But as the king said, you know, sorry guys, I never knew you. And therefore they stumble, being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. So if you're going to church and you're saying you believe in the Jesus, 
you were also appointed to the word and you're disappointed you're you're disobedient to it you're disobedient to the word because our king said you must walk as he walked and he said it through his disciples by holy spirit that wrote it in the book and then he goes back again talking about the 144,000 see all these were called now he says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous laws, his commandments. You were once evil, I was once evil, and now we were brought into the law, into the light, into the truth, who once were not a people, no, the chosen are scattered across the entire earth and to the uttermost parts of the heavens. We're scattered in such a way that we're not a people. Uh, it's basically I'm an individual, but then there's going to be a gathering here. And it says, but are now the people of Yahweh. Because as you get brought together, you become a people. You can be a people on your own, but it, it's not much power at all. But once brought together, then we can usher in this kingdom. Who were once not a people, they were scattered, but now when they're joined together, when they're gathered together, they're a people of Yahweh, who had not obtained mercy. No, Enoch even spoke about this, where our holy temples suffered greatly, they weren't honored at all in these last days as they should have been because we walked in righteousness in the commandments, you know. the Every living word, it speaks of those that will keep the laws and commandments, you know, how joyful they'll be and everything. But you can't see that in the lives of us because a lot of people don't understand what our king was saying when he said, I chastise those I love. If you're not chastised, you're a bastard. Not a son or a brother to our king at all. You're a bastard. You're just a vessel that was made for dishonor. And you'll see that those that are actually called, that they're going to start having adverse things take part in their life to bring them into this perfection that our king desires and to at least get that desire in you to never sin again if you've got that and you die 20 minutes from now you may have salvation not have to go through the second resurrection or be destroyed but you'll be allowed who once were not a people but are now a people of yahweh who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy and there's going to be healing and such that take place when the 144,000 are gathered and all nations eventually flow to that area where they're at to our Father's house to learn of His ways and to walk in His laws. It says here in uh, 1 Kepha 2.11, Beloved, and he's speaking now to all those who were called, not to the chosen so much, because the chosen have already taken over these things in their life where they're not doing these things but he's saying to those that hear the truth and can understand it he's giving instruction the same as I'm asking y'all to take this instruction to heart as well he says beloved I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul We've overcome these things, you know, those are the 144,000. That's why it refers to us as being virgins, okay? <laughs> Doesn't mean we haven't had relations with those of the opposite sex, okay? Uh, it doesn't mean that at all. It means that we are no longer worshiping and following obeying the gods we're not fornicating and going a whoring after the gods he's asking you to do the same thing here i beg you as sojourners and pilgrims abstain don't do these fleshly lusts anymore it wars against your soul having your conduct honorable among the gentiles that when they speak against you as evildoers and Evildoers are those that break the law. But if you're 
keeping the law, then they're speaking against you as if you was an evildoer, though you're not. That when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your righteous works. Now, this word good should have been retained as righteous. Right or righteous. And, of course, that's Deuteronomy 6.25. It'll be our righteousness if we keep the commandments, the Ten Commandments. It'll be our righteousness. That they may, by your righteous works, which they observe, glorify Yahweh in the day of visitation. And this day of visitation is coming. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. You know the laws of the land. Wear your seatbelt. Stop at the stop signs. But, of course, if it goes against the faith, the truth, the laws of our Heavenly Father, by all means, abstain from that ordinance of man. You know, you don't have to take one of those V-A-C-C-I-N-E-S. You do not have to take these things. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for Yahweh's sake, whether to king as supreme or to governors, you know, stay in the house. It's not going to hurt you. In fact, being away from that world, you know, <laughs> it helps you a lot not to be touching. They're spreading pork everywhere, you know, <laughs> washing down the conveyor belts at the grocery stores with pork, so please wash your groceries when you get home, and they'll be clean at sunset, <coughs> or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of those who do righteousness. Now, of course, you know, I don't see any of these governors or the kings of the world today that are punishing the evildoers. <laughs> yeah. You know, they know who the evildoers are, and it seems like they're being lifted up, and the people are rebelling in this world, and they're rising up against their kings and their governors and such. We shouldn't do these things. Just stay in your house, man, and stay safe. Be separate from the world. For this is the will of Yahweh, that by doing righteousness, you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. As free, okay? You're free in our king. You're free because you keep the laws and commandments now where you didn't before. You're free. And then it says, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice. Not saying, hey, I'm American citizen so I can fornicate. That's a vice, you know? Vice is sin. So you're free in our king, but don't use that liberty as a cloak so you can sin, but as bondservants of Yahweh, in a bondservant, you know, if you're under bond, if you break the bond, which is the every living word, then you are guilty and they could put you back in jail. You can go back to the grave. Honor all people. So there you go, you know, the, the hate Paul society right there. You're to honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Reverence Yahweh, fear Yahweh, and honor our King. Servants, be submissive to your bosses, to your masters, with all reverence, to, with all fear that if you go against them, you're going against our King. You're going against our King means you're going against our Father, who set the groundwork that our King walked on and firmly established for the rest of us who desire to believe. Servants, be submissive to your rulers, to your bosses, your masters, with all fear. Not only to the righteous and the gentle ones, to the ones that have some understanding, but also to the harsh, to the real jerks out there that want to really uh, put you under the lash, you know, that you work for. Be submissive to it. Let our Father... You know, be given all the glory and honor and praise for the things that you suffer. That are, give it to our king, that our father be honored and glorified. For what credit is it if, when you are beaten for your faults, when you do something wrong and you're beaten for it, and you take it patiently, you know, what big deal is that? But when you do righteousness, when you do rightly and suffer... 
if you take it patiently, you don't buck up, you don't scream and holler, or throw a hissy fit or anything else, this is commendable before Yahweh. For to this you were called. For to this you were called. What were you called to? To suffer for doing what's right. That's what you're called for. Many are called. Few are of the 144,000. Few are chosen. Few choose it. And of course, it, it's to do with those called out at, at the first. Because Yahshua also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin. So if you're going to follow his steps, then you need to stop and turn from your sin and commit no sin. <laughs> That's how you walk like our king. And he walks inside your heart if you allow him. Nor was deceit found in his mouth. He didn't revile those who persecuted him and everything. He did get down on those that was teaching men to teach falsehood, to obey falsehood, to obey the traditions of men, and he got down on them all the time. Even, you know, what, the, what they claim is his first miracle, where he turned water into wine. He used the cisterns there, you know, that the big jugs that was of the fellow that, you know, was most likely a priest in that household putting on a wedding. And those jars were used for ceremonial washing, you know, and everything. Washing stuff off into those jars. Our king had them fill them up and turn it into wine. Could you imagine the, the look on the fellow's face when he found out where the wine came from that he was praising and saying, oh, the best is brought out last. They usually bring out, you know, the best first and save the worst for last. But anyway, there was no deceit found in our king's mouth. Who? When he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. He committed himself completely to the Father. We, in turn, need to commit ourselves to the Son so our Father can receive the glory, the honor, and the praise through his righteous Son, our High Priest, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. It says nothing about a crucifix or a cross there at all. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, just like Moshe held up in the wilderness, the pole that they put a bronze snake on, that anyone that looked upon the snake would be healed of the snakes biting the hell out of everybody because of their disobedience. who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, having repented, having started the conversion process, might live for the Ten Commandments, for the law. Deuteronomy 6.25 again says, it will be righteousness for us if we keep his commandments, so that we might live for the commandments, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. And that's when our king can see you, is when you died to your sins, you took on the schoolmaster, that is bringing you to our king. And the more you practice the schoolmaster, the more the laws and commandments are written in your heart, your mind, your soul, your every strand in your DNA. Now here it talks about, so the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are of the 144,000. And let's start with Matthew 20, verse 8. It says, so when evening had come, and of course this is talking of the, the vineyard where... Our king went out, he called first those at the very beginning, and they're the ones that are chosen. And for many years, they've gone through all the work uh, that started in that day. And that day that our king started this last work, this last generation, he called out certain ones. 
And then, it's this, and then through the day, he called out others and others and others and others, going to give them all the same reward, salvation, as the very first ones that were called and then chosen. So, so when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, their salvation, begin their everlasting life, their immortality beginning with the last to the first. The last one's called out, like the eleventh hour, it says here. And when those came who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, those that were chosen, the first came, they were also called, but they became the chosen, and when it came time for them, all those that came from the teachings of the chosen that came from our king for us to teach okay to bring out and to share with everybody there's this one here that felt that he should get more because the fellow that was called out the 11th hour that simply understood the words and lived by them for a short while before our king returned received everlasting life just like the ones that was chosen but when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us, who have borne the burden in the heat of the day. But our king's going to answer and say to them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the same price? Salvation, immortality, living in the kingdom forever. Then he says, take what is yours and go your way. But notice up here, but then he answered one of them. He didn't answer all of them. He answers one of them because one of them thinks they want more. Even though the others might say, you know, it makes a point. You know, we probably should or whatever. But our king picked out the one that he had chosen to let him know, hey, you're pretty much out of line. In fact, take what is yours and go your way. Here, now get out of my sight. I desire to give to this last man the same as you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I desire with my own things, or is your eye evil because I am righteous? Three out of four fall away. We'll see that in a moment. So to the last, the ones that came in in like the 11th hour of the day, they're going to be the first in the line to get the reward. And those that were chosen are going to be last so we can watch all the marvelous, wonderful things that are going to be given to all of you that have listened to our words. We're going to see the reward that you get. That's one of the benefits of being a chosen we get to see each and every one of you all the way up to the very last one of us, which I hope I am, to be able to watch everybody get their rewards. And hopefully if I'm condemned, you know, nobody's going to see me because y'all are already inside. So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called. And who are these? They're both the last and the first. They were all called. Many are called, but few are chosen, fewer of the priesthood that has been in existence, you know, since the beginning. Our father already knew who they'd be. And when the year 325 AD came around and all the true believers were killed off, that was of the number for the priests and the kings to come. But there's a remnant of the number. And not all of those are going to be those either. Some of those were merely called and they're not chosen either. There's only certain ones that were chosen. And there's many others that are going to be witnesses. But anyway, uh, it says, for many are called, but few are chosen here in Matthew 22. And it talks about this wedding supper. And Yahshua answered, spoke to them again. By parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And he sent out his 144,000 to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants. Okay, that's fine. 
Well, to the 144,000, he's saying, hey, stay here. And he takes these other servants, these other ones that were called, and he sends them out to those who are invited. These are to those invited, to those who also have been called. It says, see, I have prepared my dinner, my ox, and my fatty cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his own business. Then you got those that were called of the Hate Paul Society and things of this sort. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully, and convinced some of them also to hate Paul. <laughs> Can you see this? And they killed them. But when the king heard of it, and these ones were invited, okay? They was invited, and yet they seized our king's servants. The others that were called and sent, not of the 144,000 so much, but these other ones that were sent, those in the other hours of the day that were called out, they were sent out to bring in those to be witnesses to this wedding supper. The chosen are those that are like the bridegroom and the bride. Those are the chosen. And all the others that were called are these others that are spoken of, that are witnesses to the chosen. Can you get that? And the rest of these disturbance treated them spitefully and killed them. Again, you know, when you take a look here in Revelation, it talks about, you know, these kings and such. And then our king here, these are the ones that they're going to be coming against. And it also talks about those who are uh, uh, keeping the laws and commandments is what the dragon is going to come up against. It's not those that are breaking the laws and commandments that the dragon's going against, but it's going to come against those ones that keep the commandments, and the earth is going to open its mouth and swallow up the flood from the dragon, from what it says. Anyway, he sent these servants to those who were invited. These ones were invited that seized the servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. They were supposed to be, they're of the same body, but here they're rejecting the truth. But when the king heard of it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go to the highways. And you'll see here with the parable of the seeds, the sower, it all figures in. Therefore, go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. Okay, Holy Spirit's going to come down on all flesh. Call them all. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both evil and righteous. And they were explaining to them, come to the wedding, quit sin, put on this garment of righteousness, get rid of all iniquity, your lawlessness, leave it at the door, come in and learn the ways of our Father through his righteous Son. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see his guest, he saw a man there who did not repent. He was not repentive at all. He was looking around at all the other men's wives and such and trying to figure out a way that he can make a profit from these people in the future or whatever it is. But the king came in to see the guest. He saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. And it talks about, you know, where the 144,000 are going to teach all those that are called how to wash their robes off in the blood of, a, of the Lamb, of our King, so that they may be made white and purified by stopping their sin and turning to the laws and commandments. This is the wedding garment. They didn't have it on. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment, without repenting? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away, cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Right here, hopefully what's coming to your mind is Revelations 22, verse 14 and 15. This here, bind him, put him into outer darkness. It talks about in verse 15. 
For many are called, but few are of the 144,000. Few are chosen. Now here we get talking about uh, the parable of the sower. Okay, now the sower goes out. He, he's, you know, which is those that are chosen. We speak of the word to those who were called. Some will hear it, some will rejoice. You can read down here. There's three different varieties that fall away. The, fir the fourth one believes and understands the truth, and therefore they believe on the king. But he who receives seed on the righteous ground, on the foundation laid for salvation, is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Now here in the book of Enoch, he's speaking about these very things as well. Here in Enoch 104.12, it says, again, no, another mystery that to the righteous and the wise, in other words, the 144,000. These were also called, but they're also uh, known as the righteous and wise. They're known as the chosen and the elect. They're known as servants. And several terms Enoch speaks of in these last days for the 144,000. And our king was the first one to mention us as the 144,000, though he's also referred to us as righteous, as wise, as chosen, as his elect, and things of this sort as well. But he's the first to coin the term as 144,000. Enoch's saying that this is another mystery, that to the righteous and wise, 144,000 shall be given the scriptures of joy for truth, and great wisdom. In other words, we're going to understand these things first. We were called out at the beginning of the day. So to them shall be given the scriptures. The scriptures were given to us. And they shall believe them. Yes, we believe the scriptures, the every living word. And be glad in them. Yes, we are. And all the righteous ones who learn from them the ways of truth shall rejoice. And I do. I rejoice in it through you. The next chapter, 105 verse 1. Now remember, the scriptures were given to the 144,000. And it says the, to the righteous... And it says, in those days, he says, Yahweh will be patient and cause the children of the earth to hear. The children of the earth are those that are called. He's going to allow them to hear. And it says, reveal it to them with your wisdom, speaking to those that were given the scriptures in the previous chapter, the 144,000, those who were chosen out of all those that was called. It says, reveal to them your, with your wisdom, for you are their guides, and you are a reward upon the whole earth. If you believe, you can get salvation. You know, we're not in this for the money. We're in it for a family. <laughs> verse 100, uh, chapter 105, verse 2. Until I, Yahweh, and my son, Yahshua, are united with them forever, in the right, upright paths in their lifetime. While you're here living on the earth, overcoming the sin that's in your life, until the Father and His Son's united with you in your upright paths in your lifetime. And there shall be shalom, peace unto you. Rejoice, you children of truth. Now here I want to point out real quick in Ezekiel, we went over this in the last video, and it says, but if a wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed, keeps all my statutes, and does what is lawful and right, or righteous. See the two? I tell you, if you want salvation, keep the Ten Commandments, which is this right, right here, and right. Righteousness is what? Says right here in Deuteronomy 6.25. Then it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to observe, to keep, to live by, to walk in all these commandments. All these commandments, the Ten Commandments before Yahweh. 
So Ezekiel saying to walk what is unlawful, the schoolmaster, and the Ten Commandments. He shall surely live and not die. But then if a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, the Ten Commandments, and commits iniquity, and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All the righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered because of the unfaithfulness. We discussed that earlier in this video and in the last video. Because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty, and the sin which he has committed, because of them he shall die. Down here it says again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness, his sinful ways which he committed, and does what is lawful, the schoolmaster, and righteous, the Ten Commandments, he preserves himself alive. Please believe these things, my friend. Like our king said, and we're going to end on this, Matthew 5.20, For I say to you, that unless your keeping of the commandments, by keeping the laws, the schoolmaster, unless your keeping of the commandments exceeds the keeping of commandments of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So with that, my friends, I hope that you can understand the scriptures a whole lot more. There are many called, few are chosen, doesn't matter. We all receive the same reward. It's just that some of us, because we've been brought out a whole lot sooner than others, we have been granted or given commission to do other various things. And you guys, man, you're so much more blessed because you're not going to be bound by those duties. You're going to be able to go out through the fields, fishing whenever you want and everything else. It's just that we're going to have to have other duties as priests and kings, watching over, making sure righteousness is maintained at all times. Y'all get to get out there and have fun, you know? So you got a win-win situation if you'll just be one of those seeds that falls on righteous ground and grows up in the truth and the understanding of our king. Please don't be a Paul hater. Please stop thinking that all you got to do is believe that a guy was nailed to some cross when it showed in scripture emphatically that I showed earlier that he was nailed to a tree. Kepha told you straight to your face he was nailed to a tree. Kepha witnessed it. Okay? He said he was nailed to a tree. And with that, I love y'all. I hope that these things make sense to you. Let's just walk to the kingdom hand in hand. I, I'm not someone you want to follow. I'm not here for a following. I'm not here as a babysitter. I'm here as a guide. And if you'd like to be guided to our king, to where you too can become a guide, by all means, walk with me. Let's walk to our king. Let's knock on his door. I've got the light. I want to pass that light to you. So you can take that light and pass it to others. Just like in the parable with the wedding supper, you know, where other servants are taken out to deliver the word as well. And then you got the Paul haters rising up, everything else, you know. And some, those in the 11th hour, some of those may have to pay with their very lives. The proof that they love the law more than they love their own life, and they may have to offer up themselves as sacrifices to those of the beast that want to murder us all. Now, I know that doesn't sound too uplifting, but if you are of the understanding and of the called, you'll see hope in there. And with that, I love you all. Bye.